Hello and welcome. Everyone's talking about what artificial intelligence can do to businesses and to you as a consumer and how some stuff that's happening at the back end is going to fundamentally change or is already changing the way you consume products and services. But what exactly is that and what is the real opportunity and how much of it have we understood and perhaps not understood and what lies ahead? To discuss this, I have one of the world's foremost authorities on artificial intelligence and data analytics expert, Ronald Van Loon. Ronald, thank you very much for joining us today. Pleasure to be here. Right, so first question. So what is AI doing today at the back that I am perhaps not seeing, experiencing, and I may be trying to figure what's it all about? Yeah, so I think the, the, the main capability of AI is to improve the customer experience in the end. So with the help of data, you can improve the customer experience. And the example that, that I used on stage as well is if you have your mobile phone, and I tweet a lot, so I talk to my phone and convert it into text. And what you can do is if you talk to your phone and let's say 75% accuracy, which means that 25% of everything that I tell goes wrong, mm. the customer experience and the added value is not so big. But if this reaches a level mm. which is similar to human understanding, which is around 95% with text analysis, then it can really make a difference mm. because it can take over tasks which human initially did and now can be done by art uh, artificial intelligence um, by analyzing the text and transform it, uh, by analyzing the, the speech and transform it into text. And this is what you can do with video analytics, with image analy analytics, with text analytics, basically with all types of data, with all types of IoT data, uh, and everywhere where you can reach a certain level of accuracy, it improves the customer experience. So on the back end, you collect the data, you basically um, uh, define the algorithms for it, you provide the insights, and then you start automating it and learning from it and provide the actions from predictive to AI. So that's what's happening in the back and on the front end, it's the end, it's improving the customer experience. Right, and, and what are the examples that come to mind in terms, or the best examples that come to your mind in terms of how this is playing out today? It's playing out in, in many industries. Um, take a manufacturing example. So if you're a manufacturer, um, you have often outages. So your, your plant goes down, um, in, in average costs $22,000 per minute. Um, on average, it's, it's around 12 hours a plant is down. So that's a huge amount that basically uh, it costs if your plant is down. Um, and what can artificial intelligence do? Normally you have, let's say, your data where just a limited set of data can be used and where you define the features to analyze the data and these features are based upon what you know already. Mm. So um, you define your algorithms, okay, these are the elements which can go wrong, we check it, and if it goes wrong, it gives an indication. But with um, machine artists, often things happen when you d what you don't know. Mm. So what, can, what you can do is instead of defining just a limited set of data, you can take all data, you can analyze it in real time and let the algorithms do the work and find the anomalies, which anomalies are good, which anomalies are bad, and basically define when and predict when there is an outage. And this way you can yeah, reduce your cost and your, your operation efficiency um, tremendously in the domain of manufacturing. Mm. Um, if you look to retail, um, uh, one of the, the most known retails, of course, is Amazon. Um, Amazon has Echo Look and that means it's an advisor for your, your fashion advisor uh, where you can stand in front of it, you make an image from yourself, from all your clothing that you have, and Amazon starts learning from it and starts helping you, advising you which fashion, which clothing piece fits you best. So this is image ana analytics, comparing it with all the other hundred thousands of people that have similar type of characteristics and starts advising you. Um, one third example is a company called Huawei, um, they have, let's say, uh, the mobile phones and where you make an image. And yesterday I was at an event um, in, in London where they made an image from a really dark scene. Mm. And I thought, okay, yeah, but you don't see anything. And they used artificial intelligence as if it was as look light as, as this scene. So artificial intelligence understands how the image should look like and learns from it and improves the image without yeah, you having the capabilities of editing it. So these are three totally different different examples, how you can use artificial intelligence, how you can use data to improve the customer experiences or to reduce the cost. Right, and, and therefore to, to, uh, to create the layer of artificial intelligence which will actually power all this, you need strong data capabilities Correct. at both 
uh, both sort of sensing, uh, extracting, and then then putting it all together. And uh, I, I assume that's not an easy task. So how are people doing it, and how do you how do you do go about it if you've not done it so far? Yeah. So on one end you have the technical side, but it's much more, let's say, a whole organizational side. Mm -hmm. um, it, it starts with having a clear vision um, why your company is here, and um, why is this this why is so important? If if you are um, a company like Amazon, um, they now created a bank, they are a retailer, they are an IT service co company. So you have so many possibilities once you have data. A clear definition of why you are on earth and why you have a certain purpose that you want to serve defines, okay, what data sets do you need? Um, how are you going to help your customers with what type of, of services? And also what type of platform do you need and what type of analytics do you need? So it starts with defining your purpose, defining your goals. Um, you need to have your organization around the data, which means um, have your organization around your customers, which means agile organizations, multidisciplinary teams. On one hand, you need to have access to the data in a governed way with all privacy regulations, especially in Europe, this, this is very important. You need to have a data-driven culture and you need to have the technology where you need, um, where you see with almost all, let's say, digital platforms from, from five to 10 years ago, they're not capable in managing the new type of artificial intelligence capabilities and, and processing power uh, that are available. So many companies need to shift in their digital platform as well in, in the coming years. But that's more the technology side, but the technology side in the end, it's, it's not the main part, definitely not. Although it looks like it and everybody talks about the technology, but that's not the main driver to make your digital transformation. Right, and, and it's business, it's the CEO's vision about how things should be and where should it go. And is that something that you feel uh, most companies are now, at least consumer facing companies, are uh, aligned towards when you look at it globally? Or do you feel organizations still have a way to go before they can fill that gap between them and the consumer? Um, let's say um, around 70% of the organizations use analytics, mm -hmm. provide insights, which is a, a first maturity phase. Um, but from, let's say, internal insights, um, you, you want to start predicting, you want to start prescribing, you want to start, let's say, giving access to your uh, partners, to, to your, um, uh, to your uh, clients, to the data. So the, f the majority is just in the first phase. And the move to AI for their own data is a, is a tremendous step. On the other hand, we have developments with APIs where you can just request APIs with all uh, speech recognition or other um, AI technologies. And these can very easily apply it within your organization without doing all the developments. Mm. So I think you have two directions. One is your own direction, mm. which is a hard way and a long way and needs, needs a lot of change. The easy way is start using what's already there with API and APIs will democratize in the end um, AI for the for yeah for the applications that are there, um, yeah, let's let's say speech recognition. It's an API. You're not going to to develop yourself. So it's a two two way route in uh, in this case, using what's there and defining your own route and your own expertise. Right, and and which leads me to the next question: uh, Do we have the the skills at a very broad level to shape up or uh, you know or or meet these requirements? and uh, how do we fill those skill gaps? Or will those skill gaps get filled enough in time for most companies? Um, I don't know yet, yeah, th there is a lack, um, but I think it's also a matter of or uh, organizing. So you can have a skill gap, but it also means you can educate your, your staff. If you know what to do, you can educate your people. Um, so uh, with fast growing tech companies, I see often they hire um, bachelors mm. and they educate themselves mm. based upon the experience that they have, um, which, goes much faster and you just need mm. smart, bright people and then you can ed educate them. So it's more on one hand a mindset and an educational approach that you need, internal education, external education, a combination of that. Um, and the companies are not aware enough mm. to take this route already. Um, on the other hand, there's still a gap from, yeah, I think in, in, in China, there's a need for five million data scientists. In the US, they, they say it's around one million. Um, so there's still a gap, but it can be filled, but yeah. it's, it's, it's also a mindset from the companies itself, I think. They, sh they should solve it themselves in the end. Right, and, and uh, last question, as you look ahead uh, 2019 and 20, what are the two or three things that are topmost on your mind in terms of challenge uh, challenges or uh, opportunities for the sector as a whole or for specific companies? 
Um, in, in general, yeah, the challenge is how to transform and how to use all these different technologies um, to adapt to the need from your clients, mm -hmm. consumers or, or B2B clients. So clients get used very much to, let's say, the experience that they have with, with leading companies, mm -hmm. with, with Amazon, with Huawei, with Alibaba, with um, Facebook. So they, have, they are used to a tremendous customer experience. And then as, let's say, non-tech leader, how can you keep up with providing this experience to, to, to your clients? That's a big challenge. Um, and that's the question, how can you organize this change? And technology is an important part of this, but the change and the people are much more important in the end to, to manage this, this type of change. So this is, I think, an important challenge. Uh, the other new, let's say, um, big thing that's coming up is 5G. Um, I think 5G has some great capabilities. Um, it is, let's say, 10,000 times faster download speed and 50 times lower latency, but that's just technical figures, it doesn't mean a thing. The capability that 5G has is programmability, which means you can build applications on top of telecom infrastructures and that you can compare it with the Apple App Store. And you know how big the Apple App Store is. I think they do more than 46 billion in, in revenue this year with 2 million applications. And this is also a potential for telecom service providers and for companies to get access to every connected device, every connected machine, every connected person, every connected everything and build applications on, on top of this. This is some yeah, next big thing what 5G can, can bring us in, uh, in the coming years. Right, and we look forward to that uh, and look forward to seeing you again. Thank Me you too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.